When you think about uh, trade policy, how intertwined is that with immigration policy? We got a revision of this executive order on travel today. Uh, does one influence the other? No, they're not uh, really very much influenced in terms of policy. They are both affected by the same political attitudes. They're both affected by the uh, sense among a lot of Americans that their interests are being subordinated to foreigners, um, both by trade and by people coming in. I think um, that argument has some force with regard to trade, much less with regard to immigration. Um, I think the job displacement argument with immigration is, a, is, is greatly overdone. It has only a very limited area. Uh, so as I say, they're not, uh, I don't think they're economically or technically that well connected, but they're politically intertwined. Did you see this coming, this wave of populism that led to uh, the, the U.S. declaring the TPP uh, dead, uh, this sort of constriction, not focusing on multilateral trade deals, but bilateral ones? Oh, absolutely. Ones. Look, I voted against NAFTA, and I voted against the bill that allowed China to get into the WTO. I have felt for a while now, as long as I can remember, that the people making international economic policy in America were making a mistake. Partly, um, they were simply ignoring the negative effects that all this has on less skilled people. And it is true that trade overall enhances the gross domestic product. But the fruits of that are distributed very unequally. And there is already unequal distribution. Obviously, education uh, has an effect. Automation has an effect. But what trade does is reinforce tendencies towards increased inequality that are already there. And I have been critical since the Clinton administration of my own Democratic presidents ignoring that. And in fact, I wrote an article early in 2016 telling President Obama that he was making a mistake to push TPP without simultaneously insisting on the passage of measures that would alleviate the economic distress it would exacerbate. Peter Navarro, the head of the White House Trade Council, spoke this morning. and He talked about that relationship between exports and growth in this country. He's urging people to look more at the trade deficit. How much does that concern you, the, the size of that deficit right now? The size of the deficit itself is not, I think, a huge problem. After all, the deficit does mean we've had very little inflation. That's a good thing. I mean, there was this tendency to think that, uh, oh, it's awful. All these people are selling these things cheaply. Well, yeah, that has a negative effect to some extent, but it has a positive effect. Um, my only problem with trade, I, I think the, the macro effects are good. The problem is it has very negative distributional effects. And there are people who say, oh, well, but trade isn't the major reason why you have increased inequality. There's also the, the disparity in skills that are required by this economy. I agree, but the problem is that trade reinforces those. It's, it's a pro-cyclical policy in that regard. So, no, I'm not worried about the overall deficit in terms of uh, uh, slowing down growth. Obviously, the fact that the rest of the world, the developed world, was growing more slowly than us was a, a drag on our growth. But my major concern is that, uh, and, and as I said, there's, a, there's an upside to imports. They, they help us live better, imports. Nobody is forcing Americans to import. Um, if there's an artificial currency manipulation, that's an issue. But even there, what it means is people are sort of sacrificing their own wealth to give us goods. The problem is that the, the benefits from all that are distributed very unfairly. You bring up inequality, and I wonder if it's inherently more difficult to deal with inequality when there's a multilateral deal versus a bilateral one. In other words, if you have an administration here that's going to push for more one-to-one -one deals, is that better for the case? No, that that's, they're, they're totally they're unrelated. Um, the deals, I think the multilateral deals make sense in terms of uh, your, your real relations are multilateral. You don't have just relations with one country, particularly with supply chains and everything else now uh, internationalized. What, what's relevant here is it, and I do not think you can solve the inequality problem within the confines of the deal. What you need are public policies that recognize that trade will exacerbate inequality because in trade, Americans who have less skills and less education will probably get hurt compared to Americans with high skills and high education who will benefit. So what we need to do is to adopt policies in America, whether the trade deals are unilateral or bilateral or multilateral, that distribute some of the wealth better. I do think trade increases the national wealth, but it is very, very unfairly distributed. So what I want are policies that, of two sorts. First of all, that compensate the people who are clearly hurt by job loss. But secondly, we should be increasing 
public policies that provide quality of life measures for people. For example, as you lose your job because of trade, you're going to probably lose health care. I believe that's a strong argument for extending health care that's provided by the government. Now, I understand that this gives our poor president a headache because it's very complicated and nobody told him that making health care for a country of 350 million people was going to be complicated, but he's going to have to get over that.